Hey, good day everybody and welcome back to the channel. This is Juice and today on the Air Warfare Group I'm going to do a simple video. It's really not going to be that simple but it's going to be a standard video on pre-flight startup, taxi and takeoff and we'll probably get one landing in since I've defueled the airplane down to about 50% to make us lighter on approach. So <clears throat> for those of you uh, that are coming over and joining us at the DCS Air Warfare Group we do Warbird Wednesdays, and then we also have a campaign running on Fridays, a dynamic campaign involving Warbirds uh, and stuff. So if you have the BF-109 or you're considering getting the B Messerschmitt BF-109, also known as the ME-109, this is the K-4 model. It's the Kerr first. It's the only 109 available through DCS right now. And it is pretty cool. It's probably the best version of the 109 that was ever made. Um, I don't know the numbers on it, but the book tells us how many were produced, how they were, and everything. So so starting in the cockpit, I have my controls indicator up for those guys that like that. And starting in the cockpit, I'm going to go ahead and trim. There's only one longitudinal trim on this, and it's the axis for, or one set of trim for the elevator. So it's only the pitch up and pitch down trim, and it works on back there. If we go outside, <clears throat> And if I move in zoom, you can watch it go up and down. Look at that. There is up. Push forward for trim down. Trim nose down. There we go. So what you'll want to do is to, before you start, you want to push the forward all the way till it stops. Now that wheel that is over here, there's two wheels over here. The inside wheel is the trim wheel. And about four turns of that equals 20 degrees. Now we're going to take off on a normal length runway. And the normal lake runway, you don't use flaps for takeoff. But if you take off from short fields, you'll want to use the 20 degrees, which is about four turns back. So you watch the wheel spin four turns. The other wheel is our flaps wheel. And that one's, you know, this is back in before, you know, uh, you know, human factors in aviation were, you know, integrating cockpits for optimization of the human. So a lot of people could make mistakes turning the wrong wheel if they're not paying attention and stuff. And that's happened in the real world and other things too. So down on the flaps, about that's 20 degrees right about there, about four rotations back. And you can look out there and you can see the flaps are a little bit up, down and stuff. So we're going to push that forward. We're going to take off with full flaps. All right. So if, if you remember, I flew with Tactical Pascal a few weeks ago, and we did a preview of this map, the the uh, English Channel map, which just came out in the last month. And I had forgotten to move my settings for the automatic pitch control right here to the aft. And so I'm going to do that now. And then I'm going to move my fuel shutoff all the way forward. Whoop, that's not the fuel shutoff. The fuel shutoff is right there. It's under the throttle, so you got to move your throttle forward a little bit to get it all the way up. All right, with that, I'm going to go ahead and keep the uh, I'm going to keep the landing gear cover guarded. I'm going to open up the starter. I'm going to right click three times to get the magnetos both in the one and two position. I'm going to make sure my weapons in the middle are safe. I've got my gun cover switch, safety switch, my gun's arming switch up here is down. Going to go over here. <clears throat> now, what I like to do is I like to just lean over a little bit so that I can see the circuit breakers behind the handle of the flare gun. Now, you can go into the menu and ask them to reconfigure the cockpit, and it's basically just to remove the flare gun. You just hit remove my flare gun, and you will. Down here on this switch right here, we're going to set this to, this is like your synchronizer for the prop. <clears throat> I believe, and uh, don't quote me on that. I'll get you. A, I'll get that in the remarks later. But this right here, you put over to the to the three o'clock position. You just basically right click it once. Now, if you're going to go above ten thousand feet, you'll want to turn on your oxygen, like this, and you turn it on. And there's pressure comes up to about 160, 155. I'm going to turn it off because I'm going to stay down below today. All right, everything else is pretty sweet. Uh, what I want to do now, with all my circuit breakers in, I'm going to crack the throttle forward a little bit. I'm going to call for the guys to crank the engine. There's a, If you go on the outside, you'll see a little hole right there in front, just above the wing, the leading edge of the front wing, right above where there's a couple of access panel doors there. You'll see there's a little hole there, and that's where they would stick in the crank, and the, the, they would crank up and spin up the spring in the engine starter. <clears throat> Before we do that, too, I'm going to go ahead and collapse and stow the uh, gun sight. 
give me a full view of the panel up there, a full view of the windscreen. And then what we're going to do is we're going to call, we're going to bring it up, call ground crew. We're going to ask, run the in, in, inertial starter. So they're going to take the inertial starter. The starter. Now while they're doing that, I'm going to pump Copy. about eight to ten times on the fuel. This right here is the fuel primer. One, two, I'm going to do that eight to ten times. So I'm going to do this for nine times. Or around there. There's eight and nine. Don't play this back and count them because I wasn't paying attention. Clear. All right, we are clear now. So I'm going to reach up here and grab my handle, close my canopy. I'm going to make sure I have both brakes down, brakes on, throttle forward just about an inch, and I am going to pull and hold the starter until it turns over. And kick over, baby. There we go. Awesome. I have the noise turned down so you can barely hear it. <clears throat> That's so you can hear me talking. Uh, some of the times the world noise or the environmental noise is a little bit overwhelming for the for the DCS aircraft. <clears throat> Excuse me again. So now we're going to warm up. We're going to push it up to about a thousand RPMs after we made sure all the indications in the cockpit were good. We didn't have any any bells and whistles going off, any low uh, low temperatures, high temperatures low oil pressure, stuff like that. So with all that, I've got my taxi lights on, or my, my formation lights on. I've still got the brakes on. Let's go ahead and give a little bit of sound. I'm going to change that and add some, add a little bit of the outside sound and the cockpit sound. So let's take that up to 15% on external, and let's go to 20% on cockpit, see if that's too loud. And I'll, I'll turn it off, or I'll turn it down if it gets too loud. <coughs> so. Yay, not too bad. Okay, so now there's two ways that you can taxi this bird. Uh, <clears throat> it's not modeled in DCS for the taxi of, uh, you know, for friction on the tail wheel on runways. Like you can skid the tail wheel on runways and you don't take any rubber off of it and don't pop it or anything like that. So one of the ways that's easy to do it first is down here on the side on the right. Watch this, you'll see a lever move. There, I just locked the tail wheel straight. We'll look outside and see if it's locked straight. And it is. And with, well, it's actually a little bit cocked, but when I push forward, it's going to snap there. It's just snapped into place. So we're taxiing forward. Now what you would do with this, what you would do with this mo method of taxiing, is you would actually taxi and use differential braking. So I'll give, if I want to turn to the left, I'll just give a little bit of left little bit of left brake and if you watch outside that wheel that wheel is just skidding across the ground now you can do this on grass all day long if you do this in the real world on pavement you'll wear out your tail, tail wheel tire pretty bad uh, if you do it too much and get it too hot you could pop the tire with uh, pressure increase due, due to increased temperature so but in DCS it doesn't matter so you can do that all day now the other way you can taxi <clears throat> I mentioned that there was two ways. Got to make sure we don't run into that windsock down there. Uh, the other way you can taxi is to unlock the tail wheel and just go gently using the brakes and the rudder. Now, if you're in a high wind situation, you don't want to do this on the ground because your tail will be a weather vane and it'll actually be pushed around and stuff like that. So you'll want to make sure. Now, remember I said flaps are full up, which they are. Which, if you if you look out exterior and you say, wait, I think I see some flaps down there. Those are the cowl flaps. That's what's the uh, running, that's the exit for the air running through the cooling radiators for the oil and also for the engine water, for the block water. So let's get lined up this way. We'll get lined up a little bit more. Now for takeoff, I like to do it. I have my takeoff assistant settings are zero. I have it on the hardest, but I like to use that tail wheel. So I'll go ahead and lock that. I have that set to the pinky switch on my Thrustmaster Warthog Hotas, and so the pinky switch inside, not the paddle switch, is set to that. And then I will check, you know, I've already coordinated with, I'm the only one on the server right now, so I'll go ahead and take the brakes off. I'm going to give it a little bit of gas, just a little bit of gas pushing up. And I'm giving it a lot of right rudder right now. I'm just keeping the pressure on the tail to the right rudder. Now as we am slowly ex uh, accelerating, slowly advancing the throttle, about halfway up now, there, the tail's off the ground. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to release the pressure on the rudder. 
and I'm going to pull back on the stick. There, we just took off. That was pretty good. That, I, I tell you what, my first takeoff was not that way. So let's go ahead and bring the gear up. And check around behind us. There we go. Yay. Going up a little bit steep. Let's not stall it out. <clears throat> so the gear speed published for this aircraft is around 250 kilometers per hour. So you'll want to raise the gear and the flaps up. I've been lowering the flaps a little bit at 300, and I've lowered the gear at 300, and it hasn't damaged them at all and everything. So you can it's a little forgiving. Um, you know, some of the modern jets are not. You you can tear off gear doors on the Hornet, and I believe on the Viper if you lower the landing gear too high. So we're doing about 400 right now. If you look down in the cockpit, our fuel gauge, we're like a quarter of a tank or just... I think we're just over 200 liters. So let's go back and we'll land at that airstrip. Actually, yeah, let's go land at that airstrip because I want to cut this video short. So I'm getting ready to go on a five-week backpacking trip uh, along with one of my buddies that I did all across Oregon last year. This year we're going to hike from Canada to, to Oregon across Washington State uh, on the Pacific Crest Trail. So I am going to do a lot of videos ahead of time that I will put into the system so that they will automatically release about one or two a week so if you guys reply to any of those videos and I don't get back to you right away don't don't think I'm ignoring you it's just I'm out out on the trail out in the woods and I'm not going to be able to uh, respond to those so I'm gonna go full throttle all the way back against the stops against the rest notice the airspeeds coming down I'm not gonna lower my nose I'm gonna keep my nose up I'm trying to keep my nose up to bleed off some of that energy Okay, so there's 300. I'm going to go ahead and give a little bit of flaps. So let's let it run down about 20%. There's about 20. And now the gear speed, I'm going to go ahead and lower the gear, push in the gear button. Gear's coming down. See what that looks like. Hey, the gear comes down pretty fast in this aircraft. All right, there's our landing strip, and there's my landing direction, the way I took off. I'm taking off into the best wind. All right, so we're about 200 on approach, which is good, and that's kilometers per hour. This is an open grass strip. As long as I don't hit the windsock or anything else on the airfield, I can land almost any which way I want to go. But I'm going to try to line, line up on one of those. Let's go. We're a little bit to the left of the lineup, so I'm going to go here to the right. <clears throat> Coming in at a crab angle or a little bit slightly steep angle allows you to see everything that you're trying to land to. You know, it allows you to see a little bit. So now we're carrying a little bit extra energy over the fence, so I'm going to go ahead and pull back the nose. There's my landing strip. You can actually see where they've rolled the grass or mowed the grass down a little bit. Now coming in for the landing, I'm going to sit straight up. I'm going to get my sight picture, and I'm just going to hold that nose off so I don't bounce. I'm dancing on the rudders a little bit. Hold the nose off. Let it settle. Let it settle. There we go. And little touchdown. I actually touched down a little tailwheel first. Remember, my, gear is, my tailwheel gear is still locked and stuff, so you can see what that looks like. Now, as we see the trees coming up and the buildings coming up on our sides, we're going to go ahead and pump the brakes just a little bit so we don't lock them up. We don't want to nose over and break the prop. Look at that. We're taxiing right up to this apron here. I think we just went on some pavement for a second. And then that's it. Watch out for that tree. So that's the, you know, startup, pre-setup, the taxi, takeoff, and a simple landing for the BF-109K4. I hope you guys get out there and enjoy the Warbirds. Come over and see us at Tactical DCS. I'll have our Discord link in the description. Be sure to check out Tactical Pascal, Jazz Flies, and DCS Debrief, all three quality YouTube channels putting out, putting out real professional information uh, by real professionals, real pilots, real military pilots, and uh, real um, weapons controllers, air battle managers. Other than that, have a great day, and I will send some more videos your way. Thanks for watching. Bye.